Have you ever noticed nice guys do not seem to get ahead? Yeah, the exception to me, of course. But, but that's because not so nice guys don't and won't let them. Actually, they bury them. We call such corporate evildoers lots of things, ass for one, a longer version of that same word for another. My next guest even wrote a book about it. Martin Kine is his name, author of Rhymes with Passpole, How I Got Rich and Happy by Not Giving a Damn About Anyone. When he was on Fox News Channel, we were getting hundreds of emails after he was on from people who similarly believe him. Um, good to have you. Oh, nice to be here, Neil. So nice guys do finish last. Nice guys, you know, I wish that wasn't the world we lived in, but I think that um, 80% of the time, nice guys do end up finishing last, at least in the corporate world. Okay, so you actually practice what you preach. You became a complete jerk. Well, I started out, as I say in my book, as the nicest guy in the world, and it was killing me. I was looking around at my life, and I was singularly underwhelmed. And I said, "What was underwhelming you? Your pay?" Well, your I looked at my apartment, quite frankly, and uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Jerks tend to get pretty far, but nice guys have a better life. So if someone decides they want to try out this new persona of a jerk, what are the steps to get there? What are some of the most important ones? Well, the baby steps I took in the beginning, I, I hired an acting coach to help me develop a persona. Um, I think that what you can do in a, in a practical level, if you really want to start this out, try doing little things like interrupting, for instance. Nice guys never interrupt. If someone else is talking, particularly in a large really? meeting, like just this? start talking this right over them. It doesn't matter what anyone else is saying because, you know, you're the only person in the room. Are there some downsides to this? Did you become a more lonely person when you became a jerk? I was a very, very sad, lonely person at the end of my experiment. It's true. <laughs> but, you know, I had more money, and I thought, ultimately, that was my goal, and I succeeded. It's a, that is a, a serious question, though, to give you a slightly serious answer. Um, I've never been happier or richer. Don't just take my word for it. Ask anybody. Marty, off the record, I don't like the guy. He bugs the crap out of me. Thanks, Dad. Now, just by following the 10-step system I described in my new book, Asshole, you too can become the dickhead you always dreamed of being. I personally designed these steps to be so simple, even good-looking people can understand them. I've been promoting the book. Uh, a lot of press in uh, Australia and in the UK, and so it's been a lot of radio interviews. And it's very interesting. In Australia, I was interviewed by a guy, I found out later, who was the host of uh, their version of Dancing with the Stars. This guy named Todd. I didn't know at the time. Big man in Australia, huge in Sydney. And he's on this show called Todd and Sonia. It's on Mix 106, as you all know. And uh, so Todd gets me on the phone, and he's like, oh, Marty. So I know he hasn't read this book because he's reading the title. He's like, oh, it's Marty kind. I can't really do the accent. And he's like, uh, the title of his book is, uh, oh. <laughs> so I, not only has he not read my book, he hasn't read the title. <laughs> he doesn't know what to say. So he's like, oh. Uh, so he just does the subtitle. How I Got Rich and Happy, he has the English version, um, Rich and Happy, by not giving a she, oh. <laughs> Uh, not giving a rule really about anyone. So basically no one knows what this book is called. And he didn't say my name right. So this interview is pointless. So then he, he gets me, so what's the book about? And I start my thing. I'm like, well, you know, I'm the nicest guy in the world and I decide I'm not getting anywhere. I'm underwhelmed with my life. So I systematically turn myself into a, and I have to stop myself. So I say jerk, which I can use to get away with. And he, he does one of my things, asshole number one, which I outline in here, asshole. Number one, interrupt. Interrupt. Assholes. It's very basic assholeness. So he does that. He interrupts. He cuts me off. He's like, Marty, Marty, Ma Marty, Marty. <laughs> he said, you know, let me tell you something. And he gets, uh, he's getting intense. He's like, you know, I'm, I am one of these people, Marty. He said, I am an ass asshole. He said, and let me tell you something. And I hear he's misting up there. I can hear it. He's like, it's a cold and lonely way to live. <laughs> I'm like, jeez. <laughs> He's like, I can't, I can't believe that you're suggesting this. And he said, what about the children? <laughs> so I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> He's starting on the children. So now I'm destroying the next generation <laughs> of Australians. He's like, what if a child sees this and decides to be said, I cannot, you know, this is six pounds at uh, Amazon.co.uk. I wouldn't pay one pound for this book. And he clicked. That was the end of my interview. <laughs> so, 
I think, all right, I'm, I'm selling a lot in Australia. Todd, the, the star of Dancing with the Stars, hates me. Um, but actually, strangely enough, did great in Australia, so that goes to show you. Um, the UK was another story. Uh, uh, BBC, there's a show on Saturday night on, uh, called The Steve Nolan Show, which is on BBC Five in London. Big show, apparently. It's late at night, though. It's like 11 to 1, so it's uh, drunken hooligans calling in. <laughs> and I was on the show. They're drunken hooligans, <laughs> which I think is, is good for, like, they'd be readers, right? Because they're home, they're getting drunk, and I'm thinking, this is good. I can promote this book, and maybe they'll, they'll read it. And um, I was a little wrong. We had another one of these people. But anyway, I, I got a call. They're very bureaucratic at the BBC. So there are 25 producers for every show. And this guy calls me in the morning. He's like, Ma Martin, Martin. He went to Oxford. He's like, he's like, you cannot say your title. You can't say it. So I'm used to this. I'm like, all right, no problem. He's like, all right, so wait for the call. So then two hours later, he calls me back. He's like, all right, Ma Martin, we, um, we're having a special meeting of the BBC board, okay, about your book the BBC board. So I'm like, oh no. So they're deciding that they can't even interview me because I've written a book called Asshole. So he said, wait for the call. So then I'm waiting, waiting, waiting to get canceled. Then he calls back, Martin, Martin, good news, excellent news. He said, we've changed BBC policy for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, this is very wonderful. What did you do? He said, it is now legal on the BBC to say the word asshole <laughs> af after 10 p.m. Thanks to me. You're welcome. You're welcome. And he said, and there's a little bonus for you, Ma Martin. Ma my accents are terrible. He said, uh, you can also say the word shit. But the presenter was so uncomfortable with this that he refused to say it. So he said, all right, we have an author. And it was at like 1.30 in the morning. I don't know. He said, we have an author. And he wrote a book. And the title is, why don't you tell us, Martin? <laughs> so I said it. And then proceeded to get a lot of calls from drunken hooligans who uh, didn't understand my work. <laughs> Which is all right. So I have a, uh, a lot of people, they see I've written this book and they say, Martin, uh, I don't think you can help me because I'm already an asshole. And I say, I don't know, are you flattering yourself? <laughs> Maybe you are. So I put a little quiz in the beginning of the book. And it, it's a yes or no quiz, it's very simple. But you ask yourself these questions to see if you really are an asshole. Number one. Do you feel you can never be happy if somebody somewhere is sad? When you get the wrong dish in a restaurant, do you just assume you ordered wrong? <laughs> Have you ever stayed up all night worrying you've offended somebody? <laughs> when you apologize, did that person not have a clue what you were talking about? <laughs> it's a true story. Do you believe plants have feelings? <laughs> when you enter a room, do people start napping? Did you pay the manufacturer's suggested retail price, the MSRP, for your car? When you fly off the handle, does nobody seem to notice? <laughs> True story. Does it make you proud when someone takes credit for your work? <laughs> Do your coworkers seem to have trouble remembering your name? The best one. Have you ever been invited to girls' night out even though you're a man? Did you go? <laughs> so what are you waiting for? And if you act right now, I got a special gift for you. I have it right here. There it is. There's a reason he's single. There's a reason he's free.